We kept the receipts. Put the camera on me right now, please. These shameless, pointless, and random talking points from these talking heads, or should I say, all heads, impressively have all taken place in at the very least the last half decade. Because everybody's got something to say. With these expectations, if he's Anthony Davis, that's a disappointment. Right, but these are the dumbest NBA takes ever. And what would you like people to know about you? I'm a fun guy. <laughs> <laughs> Before getting into this, wanted to say that while everyone makes bad takes on the occasion, those who assume they're right about everything come off as arrogant and often can get caught looking silly by portraying the opposite. That's why owning up to one's mistakes is what separates the savant from the ignoramus. Reason I say that is, the people you and I see spew the takes they do on national TV daily and get paid millions for it just about never admit to their wrongdoings. There's not a single instance you'll find of any of these so-called analysts getting segments to address and apologize for the bad take they wouldn't ever dare of backtracking. That's what makes these takes that much more gratifyingly naive, if you will. Stephen A. Smith had a ton of bad takes which we'll cover, but two of them revolve around Kawhi Leonard specifically. One of which, where Smith pleaded to Clippers owner Steve Ballmer that he should dramatically shake things up. Put the camera on me right now, please. Steve Ballmer and the Los Angeles Clippers should force Kawhi Leonard to retire. Kawhi's Clippers were actually more hampered by Paul George in 2023, as while Leonard only suited up in two playoff games, he led the playoffs in points per game. Stephen A's most blasphemous take of the year also came at the expense of Kawhi Leonard, this time during halftime of a nationally televised game. Think about this, if DeMar DeRozan had stayed and Dwayne Casey had stayed, who's to say that Toronto could not have accomplished the same thing, particularly against an injured Golden State Warriors squad? Stephen A would even state this take straight up to DeMar himself. One of the things before I even go any further, I want you to know something that I've said. Kawhi Leonard, Ka Kawhi Leonard is a great, great basketball player. There is no doubt about that. But I've contended all of these years, as much respect as I have for Nick Nurse, y'all, Toronto, meaning the Toronto Raptors, would have done exactly what they did with you and Dwayne Casey as, as still a coach, <laughs> as opposed to, it wasn't about just Kawhi and Nick Nurse. Mm -hmm. LeBron had left the conference. I thought the path was clear for y'all. Did you always feel that way? Most definitely, most definitely. And it, you know, it sucks that we couldn't see what, what, what could have happened. Now, I'm not gonna go in depth responding to all these takes so much, but keep in mind DeMar DeRozan had practically the exact same roster around him in 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18, yet failed to get the job done. Stating, even somewhat satirically, that DeMar could have knocked down the type of series-shifting daggers that Leonard did to peel Toronto over the top is beyond insane. It really goes to show you how little Stephen Naismith knows about the game. If you watched even a few quarters of what Kawhi did in those 2019 playoffs, you're well aware that the type of production Leonard pulled off was in a different stratosphere than anything DeRozan could even dream of doing. Leonard averaged 30 and a half points in 24 playoff games, hit a game seven buzzer beating game winner for the ages, clutch shot one after the next to fuel Toronto over the top to come back from an 0-2 deficit against the stacked Giannis led Bucks in the conference finals, and did it all on an extremely efficient 62% true shooting. In the same position as Toronto's number one score, the man Stephen A is claiming would have done the exact same thing as Kawhi in 2019 in five tries, never averaged more than 23.9 points per game in the playoffs, and never shot higher than 55.7% in terms of his true shooting. The rest of the blasphemy I highly suggest you strap in for, there's not even a need for a response to. Take a listen. This whole time I've been thinking that Pop was On his way a bad out. coach. <laughs> Why would you think that? Because he's just been losing without good players. So what's at stake for Spolstra specifically? I cannot make them top 15 coaches in the history of the NBA. We're doing what? that later on. I can't do that. John Kundra should be in the top 15. He coached them Who? Minnesota in the 50s. It's like you can't call it a dynasty, but it's definitely the weirdest run I think we've had. Why can't it's, you call it a dynasty? Because it's just not. It's, it's a run. What's a dynasty? It's a it's not that. What is it? It's not that. We're they were like, the they had the, the second teams. pick of the lottery one of those who years. The, they missed the playoffs last the year. Who were the dynasty teams then? 
No. The Bulls, and that's it? I think they're the team of the decade, though. I think that's what they get. Okay, or the team fine. of their generation. What? If Jimmy Butler's the best player on your team, you're not going to be playing late May and June. I think there was a bit of an overpay for Jalen Brunson, but certainly he is a high, high, high-level role player. Is Damian Lillard a superstar? I think that Damian has all of the superstar qualities, but it's hard to put him in it in this moment because of he just like needs a little more. I'd probably feel differently about Jokic if he had gone through Boston or Milwaukee or in a matchup with Joel Embiid in Philadelphia. Jokic isn't known for having some kind of dominant post game. Hold on a second. It's, it's not his second. game. He's not a dominant. Is he a dominant post player? Hey, Is Jokic Stephen a dominant a. post player? St- Stephen A, we've got 10 years of tracking data. You know what the number one most efficient half-court play is in 10 years across the NBA? What? A Nikola Jokic post. What is it? There you go. Whoa. Boom. Boom. I think Dirk is overrated by a lot of people. I I got the Brooklyn Nets going to the final. We'll revisit this another time. I'll go a step further. I got Kyrie Irving as one of my top league MVP. I think Kyrie Irving going to put on a show. Problem with Steph Curry is I think sometimes people have tried to be him and it's hurt the league. Because now everybody wants to shoot threes. Kevin Durant needs a a relationship that teaches him what you have to respond to, what you just let go. Mm. And that, for me, is what marriage taught me. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? What's really important? And to your point, I thought it was a... a, a, It's at the heart of it. I'm aware of all criticism. Of course. But I have learned how to only respond and take seriously criticism from those I respect and from those who know me. That, again, you get married or you have a significant other, and when they know you and they talk to you about issues that may exist, I listen to that. I've learned to listen to that. What the hell? You saw a few dumb takes about Nikola Jokic, both in this video right here and in the clips you just saw. Maybe the dumbest take came back in February, however, where the now-fired Max Kellerman established his top three tiers of NBA players, excluding the two-time MVP in the Joker from any of the tiers. Just an absolute joke, as the horse racer would display in the form of a Finals MVP trophy and a run where he averaged 30 points, 13.5 boards, and and 9.5 dimes, over 20 playoff games. But that take you just heard from Max really shouldn't surprise you, given it's coming from the same man who was made famous for saying, I want Iguodala. Gotta love the people they force feed us on cable. Let me know the worst take in this video down below in the comments section. This was D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.